know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted out of I am excited because uh, this right here, this is a special show. I know I've said that four to 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Um, <laughs> um, we got a special guest, but first and foremost, Harry, what's popping? No, what's popping? I'm popping. That's what's popping. I don't even know how you could ask me that question. Are you, uh, oh, God shit. Damn it. All right, Cardi B. <laughs> you still, you still putting the boots to him? The I'm, laying the, I'm laying the boots to bitches, and I still uh, don't know whether that's sexual or physical. <laughs> but either way, uh, anyone who wants some can come get some. How about well, that? All right, all right, Dre, what's popping? I'm doing rather well, my good man. I can tell. I can tell. You know, I've uh, <laughs> times times have been. I've seen darker days, but now I've seen brighter nights. Uh, all right, and moving right along. Let me get to my guest. <laughs> let me get to my guest. Turn it to uh, Brian Gumble talking about the <laughs> you know, what that was. <laughs> uh, you know what? And I got, I'm the one. Uh, well, let me introduce my guest before I start just talking to her. Since we're so professional, this young lady I want to bring up. Um, just a really dope human being, super, super funny. Um, we just did Netflix, uh, just a whole bunch of shit doing. They ready. We'll still talk about that. Dope as shit. I wanted to tell you it was dope set. Give it up for Aaron Jackson, y'all. Give it up for Aaron Jackson. Yeah. Clap it up, y'all. Give it up yeah. for me. Thanks for having me. Thank thanks you. For, thanks for having. I'm so good. It's so I because um Aaron is a person that I see a lot and I enjoy. See, I like when I see Aaron, I get a good. So it's a good thing. I second that, yo, for real. Aww, yeah, I don't guys. even know you personally. The per like we don't know each other like that, but I see you all over the fucking place. Anytime I'm doing, like I see it, I'm like, oh shit, and then it's just like you're like always cool. Just like, you always good. got like a real chill energy. Like I'm like you just, just yeah, like. So she's like the anti Todd. Oh, gotta try not to saying, be a raging Dante? bitch today. <laughs> 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 the pressure is on. <laughs> Y'all should have said that before I started drinking bourbon because I'm gonna be a different me. <laughs> yeah, look, we can take it all. We'll take it all. Uh, bourbon from a straw. I hear that. Do it. That's right. Get it. Get it. <laughs> That's right. I mixed it. I, I put it. I put a little ginger in there just so I could, you know, not be too tossed for the show. Uh, <laughs> so, you can lie, so you can lie to yourself that you don't have a problem. <laughs> Balance. <laughs> oh, I know so I, have it. A uh, I feel you. Um, Sometimes but, yeah. I, I do half Coke, half Diet Coke, and I felt like I was doing something right. You just. You that's what you, <laughs> damn. Coke, have diet coke. That's fat math right there. Yeah. I mean, you that's definitely <laughs> fat math right there. No, it cancels great. it out. It cancels yeah. out the coke. Work it out. You got it's time. all it's all in negotiation, player. Yeah. It's all in negotiation. Um, but it's always I always have a good feeling. Very, very, very funny. If y'all you want to check somebody out that's funny, it's dope and 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 very fluid and and just dope to watch. Check out Aaron's funny, Thank funny, you. funny thing. Yeah, and where is no. it available? It's on Netflix, correct? Is that it's on Netflix? The... Tiffany Haddish presents Stay Ready season two, episode two. That's me. They they ready on Netflix. Yeah. Dope, dope. Um, 
how was that doing that? How was shooting that? Because y'all shot that during the whole pandemic, right? We did. We did. We shot it in October. So it was definitely, um, you know, flying was a little nerve wracking because that was my mm. first time really doing right. anything. Right. I wasn't doing anything till Tiffany called. I was just sitting mm. on myself eating Cheez Its. And uh, oh, were you cool with? Was you cool with her before? Or I have never met her until I kind of got that feeling. Like she mm-hmm. just, how did she pluck you out? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> you know, she was like, I've seen you before. I've seen you at the cellar. I've seen you in L.A. And I just thought it was I was like, that's so dope, because the first season was like all her girls. Mm-hmm. Right. And then this season, you know, she had relationships with pretty much everybody. Everybody. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I didn't know her. And I'm like, I don't know how I got here, or how you found me, but I'm grateful. Oh, I thank you. No more questions. Oh, yeah. You yeah. shared your platform. You didn't have to do that. Who does that for somebody they yeah. don't know? Yeah. yeah. You don't want to keep asking questions. You're just happy no, to no. do it. You yeah. don't want to talk like, yourself you out of the here? gig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You <laughs> wait, is that Aaron with? Oh, wait a minute. You're Aaron. Oh, I got a different right. Aaron. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's, what's crazy to the. Um, you know, you say who does that? It, it, it seems like the the kindness that you give people, you don't realize how much it gives back to you when you when you give of yourself. I mean, we get everybody's so often we're trying to hold on to everything. And in the process of us holding on to everything, we, dr- we end up dropping everything and don't get it. Yeah. Don't have anything. And so the goodness of that is like I find. And, and so um, I don't know if you know the premise of the show. I know I won't, you know, but it's we're trying to make dudes better, relationships better, women better. And the, the, the fundamental principles is that I, I, that we've boiled it down to is authenticity, credibility and empathy. And to instill that in the way and to really kind of stay in the, in the, in the, in the scope of that. So when you talk about somebody like Tiffany just plucking somebody out and doing something for them, as much as it's such a benefit for you, the, 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 the benefit it is for her to just be able to say, you know, uh, this is the person that I am. Now I'm a person who has, who has, has civility and generosity and, and it just is, it exudes you in a way that you don't, you, that you wouldn't even understand. And a lot of times I'll have dudes, you know, they'll, they'll come and listen to the show because it's like, they'll think it's a pickup thing. And then when I explain to them, it, it's it, real game is no game. It's at, at, at the fundamental of where you, who you are, people going to see you. And, and, you know, we learn to put on these facades, but the reality is that we know who we are and there's always a subtext where we're communicating this way. So if we think we ain't shit, the reason why the motherfucker is, that you wit is not is treating you like you ain't shit is because you you're really telling them to. It's 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 in the, at the core of who you are. It Feel comes. To you. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, okay. it's it's interesting with even like with, with comedy. And that's, you know, when I talk about your comedy and I'm saying how fluid and comfortable is because it, it, it exudes through your skin. Like it's it's something that's not it just it's in a comfortable place. And and that is why it's so different and so unique and so beautiful in that way. And when we act like that in real life, in every situation, the same thing is true. It just, you know, that those moments when we're on stage and there's such truth in what we're saying, Mm -hmm. just because we're present and reacting as opposed to letting all these other, uh, you know, these other forces say, I need to, you need to do, you should be this way and you should be that way. Um, And, and I think that is just one of the things that's the most attractive about a man and a woman is, is that kind of truthfulness. And we put all these values on so much other stuff. Um, that doesn't even matter if there's no integrity in the first place, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I remember it, the first. I was laughing earlier. I wasn't laughing at what you were saying. It was just that you said the word facade, oh. and then that reminded me of the first time I ever heard the word, and it was at at a youth camp. And in the <laughs> it was, it was a, when trouble youth program joined yeah, yeah, the yeah, church. Yeah. You and, Dre in a yeah, trouble you. I used to. Okay. I just used to fight a lot. I wasn't doing nothing else. I, I was being sarcastic. I, oh. I knew why you were there. I knew why you were there. I, I was. I was trying. I was trying to do nothing else. But yeah, I was in that. No shit one assumed and, you organized it, and we're running. Right <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Andre. Andre's fifteen, and be, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start a youth core. <laughs> but no. <laughs> 
But go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But anyway, were, anyway, go ahead. Facade shit. It was just it was when impactful because it? it was this kid that was a nerd and he said it like the whole like oh even the gangsters kind of got like so what that what that mean though. Like it was it was a, a moving moment for the church. Like all of us was like, what the fuck is a facade, nigga? Like, he stopped everything with that word. It was just oh pivotal. Vocabulary quizzes. That's how you stop the violence, right? Yo, that shit had a shook. We was just violence went away. Yeah. Um got a man. Aaron, you got a man? Uh, I was like, who you talking to? Um, <laughs> Harry. I'm talking to Harry. Harry, you got a man? You got a man. Y'all broke no, up again? Yeah. Be pacific with your questions. No, I don't have a man. I'm fucked up. He's no, He's nothing going around. on, Aaron? Or is it because no. of the COVID? Mostly because of the COVID. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was I was I was cougaring for a while. Really? Um, How young did you go? Um... He's 11 years younger than me, which is okay. still grown. Yeah, I'm not young. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, he but he had he had definitely had the mentality. You know, it was just it was just having fun. fun. That nigga was mm-hmm. playing Xbox. What up? He got, what's his <laughs> pin number? I didn't know what he was talking about half the time. I was like, <laughs> OK, you got, a, you got a nice young back. Mm-hmm. I'm good. You know how I met him, though, how I met him, literally a nice young back. I met him because when I moved into this apartment, he was my mover. Move? I hired a moving uh, help uh, from you all. <laughs> and he was my mover. I was like, well, he already know where I live at. He put the bed together. Shit. Time, you, know? <laughs> you might as well let him use it. Right. <laughs> you might as well sleep over. Shit. No, Did you, really do it that day? Did you do it that day or you were just another day? Um, Two days. Two Maybe days. Later. Oh, yeah. Nah, give him a good ass job. That's you what I'm right. talking about, Aaron. I'm about yeah. to go get me a moving job. I'm gonna start you, bro. All you need is a Listen. t-shirt with the company logo. Boy, your future bright. <laughs> and one of those dollies, just a dolly. And uh-uh, that's uh-uh, nigga. Dolly no. save your back. Now you got other things to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's walking around with a dolly and a moving shirt. It so was that fun, don't even have a job, nigga. Just how long, like how long did a, <laughs> <laughs> right? You just dressed like a moving man. <laughs> Where's your truck yeah. at? Nah, yo, I'm, they coming. They bringing it around. I got you, boo. He, didn't even, he didn't even have a truck, though. He was just labor. I had to rent the truck and everything. He just put the stuff on the truck. I was like, mm. oh, damn. Oh, but, you were but, like, well, at least he's obedient. He put is. The stuff he on the truck. Good job, son. He was, yeah. He was yeah. pretty. How long did it go? Um, so, off and on, probably for like a year and a half, but not straight through. Yeah. You would. Are you? In a place where you're looking for something, not looking for something. When's the last time you had a uh, like a real or like a dude, dude? Before that, and that was before COVID. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. And I blame, you know, I blame work for some of it. You know what I mean? But I can't blame yeah. work for all of it. You know? Yeah. And what but, do you um, think it is? What do you think the thing? Is, the <laughs> well, you know, like I said, part of it was just five. <laughs> I didn't know how to meet somebody to make time for. Like for me, it was like, look, when I first meet you, we don't have to fit it in in between. Like, I don't know you enough to take off a Friday and a Saturday. Like, right. like right. let me meet you in between the set. We have a drink. We see if we hit it off. Then if we, you know, we like each other. Then I'll see. But right. men don't like to be first thing. I'm not going to say this is the whole reason, but men definitely don't like to be fit in. Or I found that they don't like to be fit in or the ones that I've dealt with. Well, um, I, I mean, of, I, I think you're right, but I think yeah. what happens is a lot of times it's the whole idea of being fit in, fit in, like yeah. it's <laughs> so like once he's fit in, right, and now you got this nigga on a schedule, he's like, whoa, like I ain't. Well, I, ain't I don't mean bought. it like that. I mean fit in to like once we get to know each, like before we get to know each other, then if we vibe, I'll make time for you. Okay, but it was uh, make it was finding people. To get to know well, that's a sacrifice. You're not just yeah. going to sacrifice it for some yeah. dude you exactly. just met. It's yeah. got to be something. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of it. No. The other part is, yeah. Well, I mean, so what do you mean? You just like you would connect with somebody and then just not make time or, or just not, you know, not not cut your money. I mean, you I not mean, get to that part. Right. Yeah, like yeah. Where I where I wanted to know if I wanted to make time. But like they I knew you wasn't. were they knew you were a comic, right? They did. They did. But they, you know, the, 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 and it's not like it's a whole lot of people, but yeah, yeah. 
the the few guys that it that it was they just didn't like the idea of like i'm like they're like what you doing friday night i'm like what you doing tuesday afternoon like i was just trying <laughs> mm-hmm. to find somebody's schedule yeah, but here's here's a, you know it's interesting because dudes will do this a lot a lot of dudes who are uh, uh comics they'll have a girlfriend and they're young comics and they'll be coming up mm-hmm. and then they'll be trying to get you know get the grind on but then their their girl will be like you don't you don't they don't understand what it takes to be uh, a comic every relationship that, I burned them bitches to the ground <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I comedy. But, you know, but I'll tell you, you know, what the problem is the problem is you treat your comedy you're treat you you're treating your comedy like a side bitch instead of like your wife because if they if you're going this is what I do right. yo I like you copy them yeah you gotta understand this is what I do so whatever whatever and and you know if you say that up front a lot of times do they'll be like yeah yo I'm cool because you know they all they, you know on the front end yeah yeah yo I'm easy I mean you know I like keeping it light and everything and then all of right. a sudden when when somebody else is in my pussy they <laughs> <laughs> you let somebody else in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I so I think if it it's like male comics will always say, yeah, you know, I gotta, I gotta rush home with, I gotta. I, now, if you if if you're a plumber and you're and you put in a boiler, I'm not telling you how to boil. Like I, I don't know how you boil. Right. I, just what you do. So you have to kind of tell me what the parameters of my job is just like if I'm a comic and you go, oh, you hanging out. No, look, let me bring. OK, let me explain to you. You don't do this and right. I'm going to tell you the parameters. Now you can sign up or not. Yeah. The thing is, if they're not signing up, they did you a favor because what was this going to be? But that, that same problem down the road, you know? Right. Right. So, yeah, so that's part of it. And the other part of it is just me being like, just discouraged with the whole process. I think I spent a lot of time in my thirties on one person. Mm -hmm. And I think I just had a lot of like, uh, starting this all over again and finding some, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't a hundred percent into it either. So, you know, why, but I'm why, trying to do that coming out of this. I'm trying to hit the ground running y'all. Why, why do you think you weren't into it? Partly because I was still in love okay. and um, and then I just think, you know, after that relationship, I think I just was like feeling like what happened? What was wrong? You know, what I mean, I think I took a lot of that on myself and then I was like, well, what's wrong with me? Like, I got to figure out what's wrong with me before I do this again. And you know what I mean? And That's all of that is that. Suck. That's, it's, it's one thing is like I always say if um, was there was there any cheating or anything or did it just kind of go? No, it just wasn't even a well-defined situation. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, but I mean, it's it's a weird kind of thing because whenever the the relationship breaks up, usually women go, "What? Why wasn't I good enough?" And right. then when got when the relationship breaks up with guys, they go, "Fuck that bitch!" Right? <laughs> it's 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 always external. There's yeah. there's never and yeah. so it, innately, I think that's kind of a, a very woman thing to do. It's like what what part of it did I have to do with it um a- after the fact not always during <laughs> yeah 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 no and you get like- clarity we got clarity about two years ago and it was one of those things where I was like oh my goodness all those things I thought that you were not willing to give me are just things you're not willing to get like you're not right. giving them in your right. current it's relationship. Not personal right, right. right it's not personal <laughs> like your current girlfriend is dealing with the same shit that I was dealing with right, you know right, what I mean right, that's funny right. you but still it, ain't it, shit okay no, great. Yeah, you know what I mean I mean not to say it like that but like yeah it was one of those yeah, things yeah, like that, yeah yeah yeah. You're like, that's oh, great. it wasn't me. You know what I mean? And then you start. Then it, sometimes it takes that, like just that hearing it to know you weren't crazy mm-hmm. and then to be able to step back out there, you know? Right. So, yeah. So it's now not, I'm trying or I'm going to try. That's part of it, if, especially if you're <laughs> a good person. It's hard because you take everything on, on accountability towards yourself. Like, what did I do? What should I have done? And sometimes you have to realize that it's the other person that needs fixing. Now, you also should not be. There's other people who do it on you the other be, end. You uh, should be everybody. Everybody else. Yeah. Everybody's shout out, crazy. Shout buddy. out to Yamanika. The, yeah, uh, <laughs> Yamanika. Stop. <laughs> I love her to death. She drives me crazy. But the... um. 
it, it's an interesting thing, you know, that that kind of inward look. But I, I, I think what happens if you if you go, I, I always say when you, you, you buy the house, you got to buy the house based on what it's appraised at the time that you're buying. You can't buy it on what it was worth five years ago and you can't speculate what it's going to be worth 10 years from now. So okay. you got to be really honest about what you're looking at and what is what's on the table. What what is you mean relationship, you, as far as relationship, like whatever, right? whatever, whatever is in it, whatever, it, whatever asset it is to you. And so it's it's a funny thing. I was um, I was you know, I do these the counseling. I do the one on one consulting and. Um, and this guy was like, yeah, you know, um, she's, she's, you know, a lot of times she's great, but you know, she has these abandonment issues and she thinks I'm cheating. I'm like, are you cheating? He's like, no, I'm not cheating. I'm not. He goes, and I kind of feel like me not cheating should, should be the reason why she trusts me but if she thinks i'm cheating then she can't trust me because i'm not cheating anyway she, it, it, it's a it nullifies the two the thing is i was like look you have to understand that this is who she is i said how how often do you go before y'all have another kind of incident he goes every, uh, every two weeks i go so now you have to i i said let's say you date her for two years I go, that's 20, that's 48 blow ups a year, right? Times two years is 80, 96, 96 blow ups. That, that's how many fights you're going to have about the same thing that you're fighting now. Is and that it, right, Aaron? I, I don't think that math is right. Yeah, I don't think that math. But that wasn't the point, so I let it go. I let it go. What's the what she was was like, math? Uh, what was the math? It took me. 80, 90, 106. <laughs> yeah, I have well, a calculator. What is it? Every now, other two, every two weeks is like 26 weeks a year. Something not like 40, that. I don't know. It's fine. I was, that wasn't that the was point. Shut up, Andre. You're not supposed to be reading my face. Anyway. This is a podcast. You can't even see me. I've been smoking all day. So if y'all want me to do math and fucking... And fucking smoke shatter. I can't do it. I don't think anyone wanted you to do either. Point. I don't. I don't think Not anyone that. was demanding that you smoke shatter or. It's a lot of fucking. Look, <laughs> it's a, want me to smoke weed. Yeah. You want, and then do math. <laughs> and Dante was like, I do this me. for you. Y'all want me? Y'all want me to get drunk, right? No. Have an orgy, and then and then do the show too. I do it for oh, you. The shit. sacrifices no, I make bro. every day. I was else. following your point, Dante. That was my point. Is so that, listen, here it is. It's a lot of damn arguments. That's what the yeah, fuck it is. Yeah, yeah. In the course of a year, that's a lot of arguments. I said, and then you, you're looking at that in a way where there's nothing, there's no relief in sight because it's not going to change. This is yeah. what it is. So you got to understand what that you're, this is what you're signing up for. You know, and, you're signing up for it. And that's what you also allow it to continue too, because it doesn't get to however many it is without you continuing to allow. So this dude by just, especially if he's not cheating, by right, having he goes, the conversation I think you're and cheating over, yeah. and you go, and you even engage in that conversation that you're allowing that to go to happen. And that becomes the norm. You know, like we always talk about anything that you do more than, you know, three, three times. times is no longer a favor. It's an obligation. And that becomes <laughs> the standard that's set like, oh, I'm going to break your balls. You're going to say I shouldn't be breaking your balls. I'm going to do it anyway. We're not going to talk for a day and then we're going to reset. He says shit like, no, babe. He's the <laughs> yeah. <judge>. No. <laughs> no, babe. <laughs> Fucking. I ain't cheating, bitch. Let me alone. Babe, Fuck, I'm a babe I love you. <laughs> Come on, you're beautiful to me, and I love you, babe. 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 <laughs> I mean, you, if you know, if you are cheating on me, I don't know what to do. Oh my God, is this Dante's world famous Sofia Vergara impression? <laughs> is that what that was? Don't even talk to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible impression. You guys are making fun of me. It's still happening. It's still happening. It's still going on. Uh -huh. But but that's uh, that's what you allow that that stuff. To happen. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Just like <laughs> you people wanted this. You bought this. You you guys brought. We this made him smoke weed. You guys made yes, me made do him Magara. <laughs> you wanted me, me to do his voice. <laughs> No, that that was better. <laughs> oh, I get better as I do it more and more. <laughs> by the end of 
by the end of this show, it's going you're gonna be like, oh my god, is she here? I feel like she's on the Zoom call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not holding my breath. I don't know how many th- if it takes ninety six times or not. I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Why don't you shut up? <laughs> <laughs> now, it, now it sounds like uh, when they used to do impressions of Carlos Mencia on South Park. <laughs> now it's turning into that. It sounds like that too. <laughs> it's all the same. It's the same voice. Let me find out. Yo, what's up? This is Dante Nero from Man School Two Hundred Two. Um, this week, this week, uh, coming up. Uh, we have the Comedy Week on Stitcher, um, where they're celebrating our show, plus some other hilarious podcasts for April Fool's Day. No tricks, just the treat of listening to, you can listen to Man School right on Stitcher, um, and many, many of the other Laugh Button, uh, podcasts that are on, uh, that are going to be on Stitcher, part of this whole comedy festival on right. Stitcher. And if you're on your phone, you can download Stitcher in your app store or or go to uh, stitcherapp.com slash comedy for uh, all your comedy needs. It's They got a lot of fantastic podcasts, including maybe the best one, Man School 202. Absolutely. I mean, you can, you can, uh, it's comedy on Stitcher. You can find curated collection of ha- hilarious pods on the app and the homepage. Visit stitcherapp.com slash comedy to learn more. Check that out. Yo, we're going to be on that. We're spreading out. We're taking over the world. Uh, that's how we do it uh, all day, every day. So anyway, um, Aaron, did you, did you date a lot of younger dudes? Have you, or have you dated a lot of <coughs> younger dudes? Or is that more of a new, uh, revelation? that's new. Just two. Just yeah. Two. I, <laughs> yeah. Just two. Mm. Yeah. How did I you turn- find, how did you find like, uh, how did you find it? Did you enjoy it or is it something you go, it's fun for a fling? It was, I mean, the first one was clearly a fling. It was always meant to be a fling. The second one I thought was going somewhere. He was, you know, like he was dope, but um, he was a dope or he was dope because he was dope. He was dope. Okay. Uh, Giggle Harry, go ahead. Dope. But then he was dope at first and then he wasn't dope, you know, no, but you I, you know, I, I thought it was fine. Um, He was, you know, dope, I think dope another in thing what I was way? looking for dope in what way? Well, like really, really interesting um, came from he, he came to the U.S. from another country, um, but he was a, you know, a Ph.D. and he was a researcher. He just had an interesting life and a lot of wait, a wait, cool wait. story. And he was nice yeah. and charming and interesting to talk to. Um, you, you know, I think for a while, too, I really was focused on finding people who had flexible schedules. That became a thing for me. Like, I was like, oh. who should I date? Like, should I date a fireman? Oh. He's drug I, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, in Most my mind, like, that's schedules. been a problem. So yeah, then nobody maybe what I need more to do flexible than a nigga that push keys. Right. Just up front. <laughs> try to. Yeah, but I'm you telling know. you, girl, you're going to be good now. Get your little That's dope Andre's dealer. advice to Aaron. Get you gotta dealer. get yourself. You gotta find somebody on the corner. Oh, Andre, that nigga Andre ain't no live. corner. They got the Look. longest schedule ever. You need somebody a couple levels yeah, up. Right. Harry, what the right. fuck's wrong with you? Right. Right. In the back right. 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 Correct. Andre's in South Jamaica. He can yell out the window and get you one. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Kool Aid. Yo. <laughs> Got a nice young lady for you, Bill. Oh. <laughs> word, word, word. Yeah, but I feel like after this, I want to have a few nothing flings before I try for real again. Like, I yeah, need, I need somebody to touch me. Air it out, Aaron. Air it <laughs> out. Too long. Let somebody Lord, knock Jesus. the dust off it. Oh That's my it. God. I mean, ain't no dust on there. I mean, I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Figure of speech, but okay. Thanks. <laughs> What no, I, what I mean is, what I mean is, you know, what I mean, you know, it's been yeah. a while since someone helped me, but I mean, you know, like, I've, been good. <laughs> I've been doing alley oops off the backboard by myself yeah, for too long. Trained. We are yeah. polished up in here. We don't, she, we ain't got no dust. We good. We good. She's been working out. She's been training. She's just waiting for the season to start. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. She's been chasing, that, chasing that chicken like Rocky, you know, running around after. <laughs> Oh, you doubt. say you want something real, Aaron. What does something real look like to you? Oh, you sound like my therapist. Shut up. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I uh, no, because we've been talking about this. We've been talking about like what it is that I want and, you know, real things. Um, you know, I want it all. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I want someone who is um, interested in getting to know me, number one, like not 
to just not like I feel like when I have these conversations because right now it's like only online dating that's the only thing that's available right and mm-hmm. I, I started doing that earlier in the pandemic and then I realized dudes was just like at the point where and I, and I get it but like I'm not willing to risk my life for you like people mm-hmm. were like well where are we going to meet I don't need a pimp out for a year and I was like mm-hmm. that's fair I'm not willing to, to risk that so I kind of laid off on it but now right, right. you know I that's feel fair like, enough you um, feel like there's ooh, some light at the end of today nice my first shot um, nice so I'm almost back out there but um yeah so what I was telling what I was telling my therapist was you know, I keep talking to these people. I meet, you know, I'll meet these people in an app or something like that. And then it'd be like, like, I'm like, do people not know how to have conversations anymore? Yeah. Like, I feel like you, <laughs> you know, you ask a question. We talk about something. Now you ask me a question or you ask me that same question. Yeah, back. but you like, got you have done this, you know, and I'm going to tell you, this is a this is something that I feel I really feel for female comics because the. And 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 just in general, we as comics, well, it could be three. I say this all the time: be three comics that you don't even really fuck with, just part of the community, and that could be the best night of you. Like we could laugh and enjoy each other's company, and we, and then boom, there's we night. Those three people may never be together in the room again, and and it, and it will happen. And we do that over and over again, and so. When you get a square dude and he's trying to be interesting or trying to be funny and you're like, you you see it come in and you it just can't, becomes really because we you, you know, our job is kind of having that kind of mental sharpness. And but that's my thing. I'm always like, no, I know I could be charming because I charm rooms full of strangers every night. Right. But but what my therapist told me was this is what she told me. And she was like, this is a you problem. She said, yeah. um. She's like, what kind of we went through it. She's like, what kind of questions are you asking? And so I like gave her a list. And she was like, you ask a lot of closed ended questions. Mm-hmm. And she was like, and for men, she's like, you she's like, like you what? Gotta. What, would be, what would an example of a closed ended question? She was like, be? when you're getting to know people, you ask. She was like, I ask questions like, oh, so where'd you grow up? Like, da, 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 da. like that's only one answer. Like that's not a right, right. Like, what is you know? What you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta approach it. And this is this is a technique I, I would teach. I used to teach dudes all the time. If you go, um, and it can be nonsensical because what happens it it gives you it gives the person attach uh, the ability to attach their personality right. to the question. So if it's sort of like the Rorschach test. So if I go, um. If I go, if if you thought love was a color, what would that be and why? Now, oh, you got to do have to think in terms of now, as soon as you like, if I'm on, on a date and I ask a girl that question now, she has to think she, she it has to go. What does it mean? And then what I'm doing is I'm I'm listening. I'm, I'm asking yeah, the question. To the answer. You're listening to the. Body language, because it's the uh, sub, but I'm listening to the answer yeah, too yeah. because the subtext, the subtext of who she is and what she is and, and what she does gives you a dossier. So if you, if you're trying to win the war, you know you gotta, you gotta, you need the intel. So you right. shouldn't, you should be listening and engaging because everything that you are is is permeates everything that you do i'm learning that like i'm learning that about like she told me the same thing like so i came up with like really like i'm really working because i'm like i'm I'm not really trying to do like another solo bid like i can't do it like Mm -hmm. and so i um i've been working on like what kind of questions i would ask about like you know what do you want to do like even after the pandemic like kind of shit like just Mm -hmm. you know what and so yeah and i realized like if you give well Again, these are things that I think, but I found like the people that I've encountered in terms like the men that I've encountered, like if you give a man an opportunity to give you a yes or no answer, that's all they're going to give you. And so I was like, okay, so I have to be better about that because I know if you ask me a closing, I'm still going to keep going. Right. But, but that's because you're a comedian, a talker and somebody who is not is is comfortable with that. And I'm judging people based on me. And I realize I have to stop. Yeah. It's funny, I, I, the New York, I got sent a New York Times article about uh, like, these are the questions that lead to love. This is in, kind of interesting. So I guess you could use this because these are really open ended questions and they come in like okay. three sets of difficulty here. So one is like, given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? Right. So if you look back at them and the, their first thing is to go like Meg the Hitler. Stallion. <laughs> like, who? Hitler. Hitler. You know, You're like, oh, boy. All right. I don't know if this is going to work. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a short one. 
Uh, and then like section two here. Let me see. These are kind of interesting. Uh, is there something you've dreamed of doing for a long time? Why haven't you done it? You know, that's that type of thing. So that would let you know a little bit about them. And then now, now you go into section three. If you make it through, like these get a really deep. Like, what is your uh, most terrible memory? I don't know if you want to ask that one, but it will lead. No. You, it will let you <laughs> know about it. What is your them. most terrible yeah. memory? Yeah. How does that lead to anything fun? How does that like, lead to love? He's like the first when I found out I had herpes. It was <laughs> right, right, right. When I walked right. in the kitchen and my mom was there, floating dead on the floor. That was scary. But how does like what the fuck? Where you go and, from there? And this Ain't one, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how this helps. When did you last cry in front of another person? And oh, was God. It, Man, I saw another person. Why would you do it? What's this I don't ridiculous? Know. I don't know. I like the first. Yeah. I like the initial ones because those are a little light and open ended. Yeah, that's you know? something yeah. I tell dudes all the, the time. Is person, given, have you ever given, seen a dead body? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see a dead body? <laughs> yeah, I got two in my trunk. <laughs> It's you got to You the point of you meeting somebody is to get to know each other. And so if they're not, if you ask them questions where they have, like you said, where it's it's open ended. Not only that, but when you're doing that, if you really even if you, people get a sense that you're listening to them, it makes them it brings them closer to you yeah. because you're paying attention to this connection. The, but the reality is you're really trying to see if they're fucking crazy. So you want to see when the eye twitches and shit. But I mean, honestly, you want to, it's the whole point of the engagement. And I think even though you got to know what the destination is, I think you're, I think you're dealing with it. You know, even when you're talking about it, you're dealing with it. So compartmentalized. And you got to treat it more like you like you do comedy. Like if it's cr what's crazy to me is the fluidity in, in the way that you do comedy is because you just let it happen. You yeah. you guide it here and there, but you let it happen and you enjoy it. It's, it's the same thing. Because but it's also you, about I mean, you know, like you want to show them the best of yourself and not and not be fraudulent like you want to be completely accurate with what you're doing. You want to see if they're accurate as well. But it especially is important when you're presenting that to a woman that you are as or a man or yeah. a man. Right. But women are a little more on guard with it. Guys, they should be more on guard with it, but they're not. They don't give a fuck what your answer is. Like, literally, if you're hot enough and they go, oh, I'd have dinner with Hitler. You'd be like, right. All right, I might not do day two, but let's see if we could how far date one will go because <laughs> guys are awful that way i feel like i'm better in person like i i am good to meet people in the real world i am not i have not been good online right right um, right but i feel like that's what it is now yeah i mean it, yeah well it is but i mean it, it's, it's gonna open up i mean it's it, there's something i do a lot of times when i get uh, guys who are like really shy i have like a little program that i go put them through and the first thing i do is i have them i have them lay that we call it lay in the five bricks where i go and i have them they have to pay a compliment to a woman five times a day every day with no intention on getting back not like she doesn't have to speak back i don't want you to engage her in conversation i don't i'm, I'm not telling you try to get the number I just want you to engage with her and with the woman in a in a respectful, nothing sexual, nothing creepy um, and some but something truthful and very specific. So um, like I would say, you know, I love how the big hoops on your ears bring out your your eyes. And it's just very something specific. And and, and I think a lot of times the repetition of doing that. Right. First, what it does is it, it it's like doing open mics. You don't have a fear. We do open mics because we don't believe we're funny. And when we do so much stage time that you believe that you're funny, all of a sudden, then you, you're able to access all the knowledge that you have in terms of how to do to do great comedy. Whereas when you're afraid, it instantly cuts off your ability, your connection with what you know how to do and whether your ability to execute it. So there's a relaxation that happens when they do five a day every day. And it's do not it. about it again. Like you said, not being sexual. It's not at all about hitting on women. It's just literally you don't. It doesn't have to be sexual at all. It's just conversing so that you get paying attention to people yeah. looking yeah. at details, details. Kind of and yeah. Yeah. because if, if I if I if I if I, you know, if I look at you and go, oh, I'm, lo I'm loving your smoky eyes, you go, oh, this motherfucker, like how 
thank you, right? Because she knows she was working on that shit all day, trying to get it right. And then you're 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 showing that in the detail. Detail is also important in eating pussy. If you have a nigga that's reckless, he's reckless in that. He's reckless and in everything nothing else. Nothing worse than a reckless pussy eater. Oh, I mean, just, just reckless. All you over just, the place. Did I tell you to keep still? Poke it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so it's it's interesting. I'm even like the subtext that everything we do. So it's even the awkwardness. Like even when you talk about it, you talk about it with an arc like like it's a it's a like you look at your face. You like it's but the reality is that if you look at it, I mean, the perspective, if you look at it, this is an opportunity for me to engage in to in with other human beings have this kind of social which is which is really something i think people should take more um revel at more since the covid and we were so distant you know what i'm saying yeah. I, I think this the social i think this really taught us how much the social aspect of things are just mm -hmm. Like my, my buddy, his son is uh, three years old and he he um, lives across the street from me and I've never wrestled with this kid. Like I never, you know, like I would have been laying out on the grass or the rug and wrestling with him and I've never even touched that kid, you know, we, and this is my man, you know, so that's not like a defense in court. But I think and, and I, I was saying this, we were doing shows up on uh, at the penthouse for, with, and people was out there 17 degrees in coats bundled up. I, I went out and I was like, I wouldn't pay to see me and be out here to see me. Y'all motherfuckers is crazy. It's cold as shit. But they need that social. We we what we what they think is essential. What we we've learned, if anything, is what is essential mm -hmm. is not necessarily what we think we well. But that's everybody. Yeah. So when you're approaching somebody, they need the contact too. Maybe in a different way, but they want. But you know what? Maybe not in even a different way. When people think like it's almost like when you're looking up the ladder, like if you think that somebody is more valuable than you, then all of a sudden the, the contact is more important. You know, like if 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 somebody's with some like if, you know, if somebody likes somebody more than the other one, the one that doesn't even if he's not a person or she's not a person who's really all of a sudden each everything means more. It's like everything's more valuable because you perceive the person as better than you in a sense. And so it changes your your makeup because it's like this is valuable. And I think when you when you approach it with the fact that you have real value and you understand what your value is, then people because how else do people assess what your value is? You tell them. You tell them about how you walk and how you talk and the way you look at them and you look and all those things in the face. And so if you don't think you're shit or you don't think that you're good at it, then you're, you know, you're telling that to them, you know, and they're responding accordingly, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. I feel like I was so much better. I mean, maybe we all were, but like, yeah, man, in my 20s, I was out there because yeah, you didn't give a fuck. Though. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't have anything yeah. else. And then I'm like, when did I when did I lose my game or whatever? Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, yeah, no, Stella's getting her group back. Yeah, I mean, I would even I, I would even say that for you. It's just to talk to talk to men pay a dude a compliment you know what i mean just i mean you gotta be a little more careful because make sure it's somebody you're interested in. but if the dude pay a dude a compliment but don't do it with the with the i, I always say you know i i try never to give more than i'm willing to give with nothing in re return mm -hmm. so i i don't I get that you know, so so that I'm not mad when when I don't get it back. So so you pay you pay a compliment with the intention of this is this is just something that I did, thought should be acknowledged, and leave it at that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, Aaron, and then you when you walk away from it, they're going, well, oh wait, like wait a minute, you know, wait a minute, you know, because it's sincere. I'm sorry, Harry. I didn't mean to cut you no, off. I was going to, uh, I was going to say, we, uh, I was going to ask Aaron if she ever got her heart broken. Like, what is the, I mean, we all have, what is your, like the time you got got by love? You know, like, what is that time you like it? You're like, Oh fuck. It got me. Love got me, man. 
I mean, the time. <laughs> oh, it's the time. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, you could tell us a time. The one that a the, time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it was definitely the situation in my thirties. Um. Mm. I um the first time, and I'm gonna say it was multiple times with the same person because I kept, you know, Uh-oh. we kept finding our way back, or I found my way back, or whatever. Um, I remember, and this was in the like in the 2000s before it was like 2010. I remember, you remember? Um, well, maybe it's still like this. Like on Facebook, you know, how the big it was like, oh, are you in a relationship or are you yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And. So you could be in a relationship with somebody and it would have like, you know, Dante is in a relationship with Erin. And then if you decided you weren't in a relationship on your page, you could put single or whatever. Uh, uh-huh. But in my page, it would just still say in a relationship, but then uh-huh. there would just be no person. Right. right? And I got broken up with that way. Oh, and oh, I found just out wasn't- that way. And you know how wow. people are like, or you see it, and then you're just like, and then other people are like, did you see? Are you okay? What happened? Oh like, shit! And I'm like, what? Wow. What happened? Like, <laughs> what That's do you mean? Wild. What happened? And then wow. there was the conversation. So it was like a Facebook status change, and then a conversation. And you're like, wait, Boy, what? That's, that's a, backwards. That's a, that's a yeah, dickhead that's, move. Yeah, that's, dirty. that's dirty, Jesus. Yeah. That's, either that, and or now that, you're that in a relationship has- with somebody else. That has and I'm to like, be somebody else was there, so he had to. That was the yeah, place. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When yeah. you changing, when you changing your Facebook profile, it's just a yeah. pushover. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Type of shit. That is a fucked up way. The post-it note that might be the uh, that was a pretty brutal way to get broken up with. I'm trying sex to think in the of city. <laughs> yes, the Sex in the City post-it. So just, that's the especially, one. especially if you're you're watching your Facebook post and all of a person, all all of a second, the the person's name just disappears and just like yeah. click blink and it's gone you refresh like, the page like, <laughs> or you like get the Thanos notification that the person finger. is in a new relationship like you get the because it was in the, back in the day right. when you, everything was in the feed yeah, yeah, yeah. was in a relationship and you're like what the f- fucking who <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying so I mean I had we had it was bad oh my but, god you gotta talk about that on stage I Maybe used to get, um, I used to have a whole bit about that and I used to I mean obviously I freaked it for the joke but I used to be like <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I'm nigga. You live here. Like, <laughs> you, know I mean? like, you can't. You turn, I to do the, <laughs> you turn to the right. They're just on the laptop typing right, away. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, that was many years ago because that was many years ago. But yeah, I did that bit. I do I remember did. that bit. I remember yeah. that bit. <laughs> nigga, you right here. We live together. Like, you live here. <laughs> um, let's um, can you hang out a little bit? We're gonna do something behind the Patreon wall if you can. Um, Aaron, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, plug all your stuff, please. Anything you want to plug? Netflix, uh, all the yeah. good social media. Talk to me. Watch my special, y'all. Uh, episode two, season two. Tiffany Haddish presents They Ready. Watch them all. Watch all the specials of everybody. Watch Tony Woods and Godfrey and and uh, and Kimberly Clark and watch um, Barbara Carlisle and watch me. So watch everybody special. Um, find me uh, everywhere at EJ the comic EJ T-H-E comic so that's where you can find me on Facebook Instagram Twitter all that stuff alright cool Harry talk to me um, you could uh, check all my stuff out at, at Harry Turjanian uh, join us over at uh, patreon.com right now because we're going to do a little bit of listener mail and we're going to answer all the Patreon listeners who had questions uh, patreon.com slash manschool202 Plus, we, I want you to check out the Man School 202 YouTube page and the TikTok. I mean, it's all over there. And Instagram. We're all over the place. Follow us. Yeah, let's do it. Dre, talk to me. You're Andre D. Thompson. Uh, <laughs> type that in on, on, on like search engines. Hey, fuck with me. And your podcast, Andre, the, the one behind you. Slouch Theory. <laughs> type that in. Yeah. And you're going to find me, too. Mm. Hit enter. That's just dope, yo. Hit enter. <laughs> and also, Andre's just in general plugging marijuana, some weed, just as general. He's not getting paid, but just as a general. Never idea. mind, you might get a sponsor, pimp. <laughs> it's going to hey, happen, <laughs> uh, All my stuff, just uh, DanteNero.com. Uh, if you need a consultation, a one on one consultation, just go on that and click consult. 
everything else Dante Nero Instagram YouTube I'm starting to put up more stuff on the YouTube um, GYBB get your balls back WWDD what would Dante do the sexual revolution is being podcasted I love y'all man we are out check us out and don't forget the Patreon sign up for the Patreon and you can get this stuff we getting ready to do over on the other side we are out Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.